This is gonna be a huge video because right here I have the brand new Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, currently the best-selling mid-size truck of them all and the most off-road worthy version of it. And right here I have our Jeep Gladiator Rubicon and Tommy, but it's not stock. Yeah, that's right. So this Gladiator is upgraded with a bunch of Mopar parts. But in this video, we're just going to have like a casual discussion talking about the pros and cons of buying a Gladiator and the pros and cons of buying a new Tacoma, specifically the TRD Pro model. So we're going to talk about the engine, the transmissions, how the interiors feel, uh, what they're like, kind of like to drive, you know, how the powertrains work with the transmission pairings, and we'll just kind of have a fun little casual video here. Yeah, because we have the reigning champion, right? Right. Sells about 250,000 trucks a year versus a Challenger. Yeah, so why don't you pop the hood on the Toyota and I'll talk about the Jeep. We'll start with the engines. Okay, let's do it. So currently, if you go to the Jeep dealer, there's only going to be one engine option available in the Gladiator, which is a 3.6 liter V6. It makes 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. This one's seen uh, coated in fun is what I'm going with. So we get this Jeep out on the trail a lot. But there is a future powertrain coming, which is the three liter eco diesel, the turbo diesel. Yep. That's not currently available. Uh, you do have a choice of transmissions though. So you can get this Rubicon in either the uh, six speed manual or the eight speed auto. Yeah, and actually a very similar story with the Tacoma, uh, right? Well, the engine under the hood here is a 3.5 liter gas V6. So almost the same displacement and a little bit less horsepower, 278 horsepower versus 285, but more torque, a little bit more torque, 265 pound-feet of torque here versus 260 over there, and also two transmission options, a six-speed manual or this six-speed automatic that's in this truck. And actually, dude, um, fuel efficiency numbers are comparable, relatively comparable, about 18 CD22 highway, kind of on both of these trucks if they were stock. So. We should talk about which transmission to get. On the Gladiator, it really doesn't matter because the six-speed manual is pretty fun, but of course, you got to want a manual. The eight-speed is uh, probably better in this application just for the off-road use, and it really does well on-road, even lifted. It's got uh, a kind of plenty of, I'm going to go with brain and brawn to figure out that, yes, I have bigger tires. Let me adjust the shift points. And it also has enough power to get you down the road. Now, the Tacoma is a different story because I would strongly recommend getting the manual transmission if you're getting a Tacoma in 2020. They've redid the six-speed automatic programming, but it still really hunts for gears even when stock. It's just it's never in the right power band with the automatic. What do you think? Well, I just drove it for a couple days already. Uh, this is a 2020. 2021s are coming out online as we speak uh, in dealers. Uh, actually, so yes, but I also only noticed the automatic in this truck actually being unhappy like on hill climbs, like climbing mountains here in the Rocky Mountains, you know, hunting for gear and maybe descending mountains. But me going home, it felt okay. It so felt okay. What Andre's saying is as long as you don't go uphill or downhill. On highways. As long as you don't go uphill or downhill above 55, you're fine. I mean, it's a fine transmission. I'm sure it's going to be durable. I just, I really don't think they've got the programming down. The 3.5 in this is a fine engine. I just much preferred the old 4 liter. Uh, it just had more low end torque. This thing you really got to squeeze the beans off of before you get, get the power up there. All right, dude. Well, let's talk about color, first of all, because yeah. that's very important. Yeah. And also, let's talk about suspension system. Cause these are off-road trucks, and that's very important as well. By the way, the hood here is very heavy. I don't think that's impacting a lot of people's buying decisions, but this is a brilliant color. What is this, army green? It is army green, dude. Yeah. And they do every year, Toyota does, for TRD Pro models, which is the most off-road version, uh, capable version they have, they do a special color. Uh, 2020 was army green, 2021 is gonna be lunar rock. That's cool. Yes. Now, Toyota kind of started this trend of these almost flat military-like colors, and Jeep totally ripped them off with this color. <laughs> this is called Gobi, uh, but it's also kind of in that same vein, and you know, if you want like a Tacoma or 400 TRD Pro, different years have different color options. Yeah. This has been my favorite so far. Uh, and this with the hood graphics, the side graphics, and the desert air intake are really good combo. Yes, by the way, the graphics are optional and extra. I think it's about $500, $600 for the graphics. Okay. I don't know if I would get them. Uh, 
But, do you want to talk about price? Just hint on price? Yeah, what is the MSRP on this Tier D Pro? Just under 50 grand, about okay. 49,500 bucks. What was the uh, Gladiator Rubicon stock price that we got? That one was 55 grand. Uh, now it's probably closer to 70-ish with all the mods. So that's a, that, as you see, it is a very expensive beast. Uh, so price to price, I think you get a little bit more value in the Tacoma. Yeah. In terms of can I give you some examples? Equipment, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for 50, just under 50 grand, you get LED headlights. You don't get LED headlights on the Jeep. Nope. Those are optional. You get these rigid, rigid industry uh, fog lamps here on the Tacoma. Um, well, you have to uh, upgrade your lights, you know, if you wanted more LED lights on yep. the Jeep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but suspension systems, let's talk there because because that's where most of the money is going, right? Yeah, so the TRD Pro is the most off-road equipped Tacoma on the market, and it comes standard with a pretty cool setup. Independent front suspension, which is really good on the road. You can, of course, see the uh, red springs, but talk to us about the uh, shock absorbers, Andre. Yeah, dude, so... Um, 9.4 inches of ground clearance, 11.1 .1 ground clearance on the stock Rubicon Jeep. Fox suspension here, so Fox shocks. Uh, but these tires, um, they're not very aggressive. We have asked Tacoma many, many different times. I mean, the Toyota engineers, uh, many times, you know, why do you choose these tires? How come? They wanted to balance overall usage of it, you know, street usage, off-road usage. And they also say that a lot of people who buy Tacomas actually swap tires anyways. Well, I actually got a slightly different story when I was talking to the chief engineer at Tacoma. Yep. And if you read between the lines, it's all based on fuel economy. So they have to uh, meet certain standards within the company. And even, you know, going with like a KO2 or a Goodyear has massive effects on, on fuel economy, noise, vibration, and harshness. So they, they, they have the Kevlar Wranglers. Um, not my favorite tire. The Duratrack is a much more aggressive tire in the Wrangler lineup. But, you know, maybe he's right. Maybe some of you will swap them. Uh, bed length. Let's talk about the bed length. Bed length is the same. Five foot here in the TRD Pro, uh, five foot in the Jeep. This is a composite bed, so you can really, I mean, you can drop a lot of different objects in here. You will never kind of break through this. It's just gonna be bouncing around. Basically, it's one piece. So the whole bed is just one big tub. Composite tub. Yeah, yeah, that, that bolts down. Uh, you can see this one doesn't have the lights, though. They, they give you these little blanks. You see that? Yeah, but we do have uh, compartments, storage compartments, a uh, little outlet here, uh, 110 volt. Interesting that there are no lights, but this is almost a fully loaded Tacoma. Uh, storage system here. You want to show the bed quickly on the Jeep? So we had to put a bed liner in the Gladiator bed because it is not composite. Steel. Steel bed, yep. And then this one has the deck system in it, which is an aftermarket accessory to hold your recovery boards. Uh, both of them have uh, the damp and tailgate, which is nice. Yes, and both of them have this rail system, right, for tying things into. Mm -hmm. And here you put in the rack system yep. that actually ties into the uh, bed rails. Yeah, and you can do this on the co Tacoma too. So yeah. the same rack made by Rack Stars will fit the Tacoma as well. Uh, this but, one has the tow hitch. Yes, towing is really interesting. So if you guys want to bring a trailer with you, a lot of people do want to camp maybe in trailers. Uh, the Jeep has more towing capacity, about 7,000 pounds here, mm -hmm. and we've maxed this truck out already yeah. several times. Uh, 6,400 pounds, a little bit less in the Tacoma, uh, and we've done some towing tests, and I think we'll do another towing test soon. Cool. All right, now let's talk about um, the thing we have to talk about because it's a Tacoma review. It still has drum brakes in the rear. Oh, really? You're going to go there? Did you see this, Andre? Oh, there's, there's a little bit of like look at that. What is rust. going on so with this, that? This truck is several months old and it's been through a Colorado winter. Andre, it's a Tacoma. It's supposed to last last several hundred thousand miles. That's interesting. Okay, don't look at the rest, but look at this uh, exhaust pipe. A very beefy uh, exhaust pipe. We can actually fire these trucks up. I mean, most of these uh, these are stock systems. The exhaust system on the Jeep. So they both sound very similar. Uh, this one has a little bit more throaty um, exhaust. Uh, but how come? Uh, how about we do that while we transition inside? All right, cool. Yeah, let's start up the uh, Tacoma. We're already out here. Okay. So in the Tacoma lineup, you do have a couple engine options. The base engine is still the 2.7 liter four-cylinder. This is a 3.5 V6 you find in 
I think most Tacomas, especially the higher end stuff, like a Pro, you can't get with the four cylinder. But take a listen. TRD exhaust tip as well. Now, one thing I love about the Tacomas, they really are well made. All the panel gaps are just, they're so perfect. They really construct these trucks to, uh, to, to perfection. And take a look at the interior. Andre, take them on a little tour of the uh, Tacoma. Yeah, so if you look at the seats, um, they're special. They've got TRD Pro logos, kind of special uh, leather material in this one. Uh, once again, automatic transmission. And we gotta talk about comfort, right? Because that's important. People, you know, buy trucks to drive them every day, especially these mid-sized trucks. Um, once again, let me show you how I get in. So, I'm about 6'2". I really have to bend my neck, actually, because the roof is kind of low. And then, I have enough length, as far as knee space, I can move it back. But I feel like, still, like I'm sitting on the floor. Yeah, so this is a Tacoma trait. Uh the, the floor is significantly higher on Tacomas relative to the seat mm -hmm. than most other trucks. So the seat is mounted low in the vehicle, partly because the cabs are kind of squatty. Toyota says that's so they can uh, increase the ground clearance. Yes. Uh, but it means that you kind of, it's like riding a magic carpet. So your, your legs kind of jut out in front of you. Yeah, it's okay. And I've talked to other guys who are like 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, and they don't mind. So it depends on your prefer, uh, per, personal preference. Uh, push button start. Let me actually switch. Can you close the doors, please? Um, let me show you guys the camera system because you can get a full camera system, full Toyota Safety Sense system for safety. Uh, let's see, this is reverse. You can see that here. Yeah, the quality, the resolution of the cameras is not great. But look, um, you remember Lexus used to do this? Yeah. where they had this front view and kind of side view but dude if I go to four low I go to neutral and I use this little knob so there's no like manly lever to pull but if I actually switch it to four low and look at this it's blinking the light is blinking dude it's not doing anything why uh, I've noticed Toyota's like to be level they like to be level when messing with the transfer case. So let me try to level us out just a hair. And let me try this again. Did you see that? Yeah, there you now go. it enabled. So it's kind of a little bit um, picky about how it wants to do stuff. Um, but look at the camera system, it completely changed. So now I have a front view with tire tracks, and this is all for under 40, 50 grand. Now the cool part, Andre, is not the camera system in my opinion, it's the overhead console button. So we have a button here for the rear right, locker, right. but then the Pro also has multi-terrain select, so you can select, if you look there, case in the, the center. The crawling speed. Yeah. You well, can, first first it's the type of yeah, terrain management. So multi-terrain select will set up the vehicle for mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, uh, and then all sorts of different uh, yeah. systems, but then you use the same knob actually to engage something called crawl control yep. Which is like their off-road cruise control and then you can go through uh, Five different speeds and that is a really cool system. It's it's basically a kind of a get you unstuck system Yeah, and it goes basically from like one mile per hour to five miles per hour and you can hear you could hear some of the um, um, The ABS working right we've tested it several times and you can kind of hear it. So comfort and convenience, you'll see dual zone automatic climate control, heated seats in the front. Uh, the, the JBL sound system is pretty good. Uh, I do like Toyota's uh, infotainment system. It's really easy to use. It's fast I and mean, you've got really quick access to, oh man, really made it upset. Quick access to map, to audio, to yeah. the different menus. And actually this screen is kind of large enough. It's about eight inches diagonal. Um, so that's pretty nice. I like this. Uh, this is, you know, all the buttons are well um, intact and within reach. Um, I do have a sunroof. I do, just a kind of a small sunroof. I can actually slide the rear window power slide. Ooh, look at that. But, Tommy, you know what? I do not have removable doors. Nope. I do not have removable top. Nope. I do not have folding windshield. Nope. 
But you do have something interesting in the back seat case. Why don't you kind of check out the rear seat legroom in the back of the Tacoma Under? Do you want to check it out? So this seat has moved into its full rearward position. Uh, not only am I completely out of legroom, I'm also completely out of headroom. So the rear seat, even in the full four-door Tacoma, it's usable for kids, but it's not all that great for adults. But we do have some adjustability here with the seats. How do these work? There we go. Hold them down, yep. Yep, so they do fold uh, down. You can see the subwoofer back there. So that's okay. It's... it's uh. I mean, it's a usable back seat for storage. It's just not great for holding passengers. It also has a desert air intake, okay? Yes. Right here, right here. Yes, the the, the non-snorkel snorkel, because they won't yes. they won't say it's waterproof. You could also turn it around, right? Yeah, you can turn it around. Now let's take a look at the uh, interior of the Gladiator. You want to hop in on that side case? Well, you want to fire it up first so we can oh. hear the engine a little bit. Yeah, there's nothing to hear. <laughs> right here. Okay, the TRD exhaust system sounds a little bit better. Um, and also, the diesel is coming. I talked to a dealer here in Colorado. They said that they're on order, but not quite built yet. So let's go inside. All right, so uh, I'll show you the entry and exit in the Gladiator. I am six foot one. So a little shorter than Andre, but even lifted, easy to get in and out of. Now this is a much more conventional seating position to what you'd find in your typical SUV or truck in that the seat is high off the ground, so you've got this very upright position. More comfortable in my opinion than the Tacoma, but even this has a problem where the seat just does not go back far enough. Really? So yeah, so I'm all the way back and I could use probably another inch or two to be fully comfortable. But the benefit but dude, of that is, yeah, look at the rear seat legroom. Yeah, I still have a couple of, uh, maybe an inch of legroom, knee room, and I have good headroom because this uh, removable hardtop is really tall. Yep, so this doesn't have a sunroof, but it does have the freedom panels here. You can see, you know, the panels do pop out, and so does the whole rear portion. Doors come off, windshield folds down. Uh, interior quality is probably not quite as good on some of the stuff compared to the Tacoma. So Toyota does do a really nice job screwing their interior together. 8.4-inch uh, Uconnect touchscreen here. Let me flick it on here. Easy to use as well. It's a toss-up, in my opinion, between which one's easier to use. What do you think is better, the I Uconnect? I like Uconnect, actually. I, I like the Jeep system a little bit better. But dude, this only has one camera, right, on the back? Yeah, so this one doesn't have the optional front-facing trail cam, so just the rear. But look uh, at the quality, look at the, actually, look at the resolution. It's amazingly better. Yeah, it's a good quality camera. This one, of course, does have a, a manual engagement for 2i, 4i, 4 low, so it's a real lever. It can get kind of jammed up sometimes, you gotta rock the vehicle. Uh, but I do like having the lever, and then, of course, off-road tech, this one has buttons for not only the rear locker, but there's a front locker as well. There's also a sway bar disconnect because this has a solid front axle. Um, and it also has off-road pages, so I don't have the camera. And off-road plus mode, yeah. Yeah, off-road plus modes as well. And auxiliary switches. Yeah, these were installed after the fact, but these can be optioned from the factory. Uh, Comfort and convenience while this boots up. Heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, dual zone automatic climate control. Uh, here are the off-road pages, so you can see not only pitch and roll like in the Tacoma, but you can see all sorts of accessory gauges. You can see uh, drivetrain uh, information as well, so when you engage a locker, it tells you what's locked and what's unlocked. This all, it's all very well integrated here. Uh, safety systems really lacking compared to the Toyota. That comes standard now, right? Yeah, so it's got uh, um, uh, adaptive cruise control. In the Toyota. Yeah, pedestrian warning, uh, lane departure warning. All, all Tacomas do that. But here it's optional, right? Yeah, in, yeah. The, in the Gladiator we have four airbags here. Uh, we don't even have the option for adaptive cruise control. This doesn't have automatic emergency braking. It doesn't have blind spot monitoring. It doesn't have lane keep assist. So it's missing a lot of the safety systems that come standard now with the Toyotas, which is a real disappointment. But, uh, you know, if you're used to a Wrangler, you'll be super used to this interior. Upright, waterproof, durable, uh, and surprising a number of safety safety functions, just, you know, like some of the material qualities are a little little chintzy here and there. Cool. Should we go outside and kind of close this down? Let's close her down, on we got to pick our favorites.
So Tommy, what do you think? If you had 50 grand mm -hmm. to spend, which way would you go? Jeep or Toyota? Well, I think as like a normal consumer, just like an average guy looking for kind of a cool truck, I'd probably go for the Toyota. I think it's better on road. I think it's gonna probably last a little longer given Toyota's reputation. But if you're, you know, a really hardcore Jeep guy, uh, you've had a Wrangler for many, many years, you like the Jeep lifestyle and the community, the Gladiator is of course gonna be your choice because it, it comes with the seven slots in the front, the removable panels, and it will also do truck stuff. Yeah, 50 grand is really expensive for a mid-sized truck actually. Yeah. But we're talking about a lot of capability. But I think it was if it was my money, uh, it's a tough choice, but I think I would go Jeep. Okay. Because um, I think a person who buys the, this level of off-road truck is looking for adventure. And we've off-roaded both of these trucks and I think the Jeep just offers a little bit more capability, more ground clearance, you know, the suspension system. Even the roof, stock, yeah. Yeah, the roof system, even stock. Yeah. That I think, yes, it's very expensive, but I think I would lean towards the Jeep. Okay, well there you have it. There's our uh, quick take comparing the Jeep Gladiator to the new Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. Yep, and if you want to see more towing videos, fuel efficiency runs, off-road videos on TFL off-road, mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it towing, fuel efficiency is on TFL truck. Yep, and check out tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in what, Andre? News, views, and real-world reviews. See you next time.